Welcome to the Brad and Taylor Show. Today we have Heather Sean. You're listening to the Brad and Taylor Show, a podcast that inspires entrepreneurs to pursue their passions. We're sitting down with some of the best to learn how they got started and some lessons they learned along the way. Hey, Heather, how's it going? I'm great. How are you guys? We're good. We're doing good. We're doing good. Well, let's get this show started. Yeah, no problem. Let's get the show started. Tell us a little bit about you. Kind of like, what do you do? So I am a realtor. I work with Keller Williams Domain. Um, We're a luxury international brand here in Birmingham. Um, I've been in real estate for three and a half years. I also do social media marketing. I freelance for a company called Firestarters Marketing. Um, It's just a little side gig, something I started before I was in real estate. And then I'm also a mom of two great kids. One's in college and one's a senior. So I'll be empty nesting next nice. year. I like yeah. it. I like it. So when you were younger, is this what you had planned for your future? No. No. Oh, what do you have? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, honestly, I, I, as I said, um, some of my questions or answers are, I'm going to try to keep them short for them. But um, when I was growing up, I went to a really small town school. I grew up in the country down in Irish Hills. I had a graduating class at 89. My dad was military. My mom was stay at home. And I really didn't have a lot of people surrounding me talking to me about my future. Um, The most I was really exposed to is my school teachers. And I'll be honest with you, I was just average at best. I was more interested in my social life than my homework. So I just really never gave it a lot of thought. And um, getting into high school, my senior year, I'll never forget it. All my friends were talking about going away to college and asking me what I was going to be doing. And I'm like, deer in headlights. Like, I don't, I don't know. And, um, one of my teachers, he was the, one of my favorite people said to me, I see you being barefoot and pregnant and stuck in this hometown for the rest of your life. And it was appalling to me. Um, <laughs> and as much as that? that sounds like it was a very cruel comment, it was probably the best thing that anybody could have said to me because I cared what he thought. And I just, at that point realized that I've got to figure this out. So, um, I got a full-time job at a bank Um, Right out of high school, they put me in a big bank in Ann Arbor, which I thought I made it. Um, They put me in retirement accounts, and I couldn't even balance my own checkbook. So that was kind of an interesting um, (laughs) time in my life. And my manager at the time took a little pity on me because she saw me as an 18-year-old girl with a bright future and just knew I needed some guidance. And with her help, a year later, I started college. Um, but as I said, I really, nobody, my, my family went to college. So the idea of taking a student loan and things scared me. So I ended up going back and working full time at the same bank and putting myself through school. So, um, while all my friends were in their mid twenties getting married, I thought getting married at 23 was a really good idea. So I ended up, um, moving. And when I was in the process of moving, I walked into a placement agency and they asked me, what do I want to do? And I said, I don't know. I just need a job. I'm still trying to figure this out. And um, they put me at Ford Motor Company, which was a three-month contract that turned into a 20-year employment as a full-time salary. Wow. Yeah. And I wore all hats. I was a transportation supervisor for 50 uh, Harley-riding Vietnam vet UAW truck drivers. Um, I scheduled production, which was I was horrible at that. And then I was um, executive admin for my last 12 years. And in my 20th year, I for decided they didn't need me anymore. Oh. So then I was there still 20 credits short of graduating because I was taking the slow boat to China. And um, I was now faced with a big decision and it couldn't have happened at a worse time in my life. I was going through a divorce and um, it was like they cut a hole in the bottom of my barrel and were just like shoving me in it. And um, luckily I had a girlfriend who needed some help. She was a realtor. And said, look, I she's got a small boutique brokerage and she's like, I need some help. She sells in Florida. She has a brokerage here. She's like, do you want to help me? That's kind of a time when I started doing some social media marketing professionally. Um, And that's how I ended up getting licensed. So um, still wasn't 100 percent sure that was going to be because I was scared. I was scared of the idea of being a single mom, making commission only position. Um, Everybody always told me, like, you connect with people so well. You should be in sales. You should be doing something um, because I love on people a lot and um, trying to figure out how to do how to how to use all my strengths yeah. and and utilize it in the best position. So basically where then that took me was um, I recognized as being a brand new agent for a small boutique brokerage, 
this position is not something that you can easily jump into without having the right people around you. Um, Education is super important. And, um, you know, still trying to understand the market and, and economics. And um, it's more than just selling a house. And it's more than just working with people. You've got to be good at it. Um, so then I ended up running into a man at an open house one time as an older gentleman. Um, I must have made an impression and I got a phone call and he invited me into his office to give me a book. Little did I know I was being recruited, but um, <laughs> the, the office was in Brighton and it was for Keller Williams and the guy was darling. He'd been in this business for 35 years and um, he talked to me about all the things that I knew I needed. And so at that point, I'm like, this is kind of a no brainer. I need to go somewhere where I can learn, be mentored, be handheld and grow. Um, so Keller Williams became the company for me. And um, so when I was in Brighton, that office was amazing. I mean, they gave us gave me all the tools I needed. And I really thought that it was going to take me a little while before I could feel like I could fly on my own and not need a team. But within a year, um, and it's a, it's a compliment to Keller Williams, I guess, if you do the work, they give you all the resources. Um, for me to be able to be ready that quickly, um, scared me also, but it was almost like I had to, I had to make this work. I, as I said, I single mom and no real direction. (laughs) And all I knew was I had all these skills and I just had to figure out where to best put myself. And it's been the best decision I've ever made. Nice. And now you have a nice new office, right? Yeah. I I know I got, I used to have a name on my door, but that's when I had a little office down the hall. So we got to get a new name on my door, but Um, But yeah, so what is interesting is that a year ago, um, when I thought COVID was going to be a tough time for us in terms of real estate, I decided to pick up a career coach and start figuring out how to develop myself as a business. Because like anybody, if you've never built a business, it's hard to understand the operational part. Um, So that was my whole idea. And she, the first question she had asked me was, what's your five-year plan look like? And I'm like, I feel like I was in high school again. I'm like, I don't know. And then um, so we talked about, you know, once my daughter graduated from high school in 2022, I was ready to spread my wings and maybe expand my business and go somewhere else. And three months later, I landed in this office. Hmm. And um, I'm a true believer in the universe kind of provides when you, you know, put all that energy out there, it kind of comes back. And the way I even ended up in this office be kind of was sort of a full circle through a couple people. And it was just ironic. Um, This wasn't what I was looking for. But when I got in here, I knew that without a doubt that this was going to be the place for me. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It's been this place. I can't. Anyway, if you're a new agent, I promise you, (laughs) I don't want to sell color, but I can tell you what they did for me. (laughs) That's awesome. So when you first started with Keller Williams, how what was that big transition like for you with that learning curve? What's one thing that you took away from that that you could maybe recommend to anybody else new? Um, you know, I think the biggest thing was um it's a good question. We they ha- they have this thing we call bold and it's an 8-week class. And I think I learned the most in that class. And one of the things was, is learning how to keep your emotions in between the lines um, because we get very scared. We can get very excited. We can get very, um, there's so many emotions that go into play every deal, every day. Um, You had to learn how to not take this personally and just, um, you know, if you fall, you pick yourself up and dust yourself off and you keep going. Um, So that, and I think the other part was, um, it's a little cliche, but it's, you know, you surround yourself with those five people that you want to be most like. And I I really knew what I wanted and I had to go find that. I had to go build that environment for myself to be able to get to the place where I knew I wanted to be. That is so true though. I know you mentioned it being cliche, but if you surround yourself with the people you want to be like, then you're going to self-consciously or like not even aware of that become that. Yeah. And I mean, I, and I worked in two different environments, like Brighton was a great environment for me. I loved those people. Um, it's just, the vibes are a little different. And I just felt like once I got here and I'd only been here for three months, they had already invited me to participate on the agent leadership committee. And I'm a co-lead now for the culture committee. 
And the reason that was important to me was because I'm so community-based and I love doing volunteer projects, but at the same time, being a newer agent, recognizing what our culture needed to feel like for those new agents to want to stay or, you know, fi- feeling like this was the place for them. So, um, yeah, I mean, it just, it really kind of fell into place for me when I decided to move the office and I, where I thought it was going to take me five years, it was three months and. That's awesome. I, yeah. <laughs> Good time. <laughs> What do you think the worst property is that you've been to <laughs> over the last three years? What one stands out to you the most? Well, funny, because I've only been in this business for three years, but this was probably one of the first few homes I'd ever shown. It was a first-time home buyer. He wanted just a little place, so this place was like 900 square feet. It was this itty-bitty little thing on a slab, and when we pulled in, I could see visibly that this house was sitting a, a little bit off to the you know, one end was like kind of sinking. (laughs) So when you go inside, you could put a marble on one end and it would probably roll to the other side. And only being 900 square feet, this thing was like a hoarder's paradise. So there was so much stuff, but it also smelled like a meth lab. I've never been in one, but I can imagine (laughs) that's what it was going to smell like. Um, I do think that there is medicinal marijuana going on in there. So while we were in this house, we kept talking about how this isn't the house for him. There's a lot going on here, but we still kept exploring just simply because it was just that interesting. (laughs) And this, this little dog was sitting on this bed as we walked in, this little Pomeranian, he was barking like he wanted to eat us, but he wasn't moving. And I'm thinking the dog sounds vicious, but he's so well behaved. He's not moving off that bed at all. And then part of me was like, well, is he chained to the bed? I just not sure what to expect. And (laughs) As we came back to the front door, I heard a man's voice say, I am so sorry. I had an asthma attack and I shouldn't be here. He was, the bed was so old. He was sunk into the middle and all you could see was the dog on top of him. (laughs) Wait, so he was in the room. He was on top of the guy? (laughs) He was in the house the whole time and we're talking about how horrible this home was. Oh my goodness. So not only was it just visually a horrible experience, it was just... I will never forget it. Yeah, I know. I bet not. <laughs> I don't know that he will either. <laughs> yeah. Did he end up getting it? I know you, he mentioned that in the home. Maybe. No. Yeah. Wasn't for him. <laughs> no, we found him a fantastic first time home in Royal Oak. It was, it worked itself out. <laughs> nice. I know you've had a lot of changes in the last year. Um, you got a new office. What kind of goals do you have finishing up this year and going into the next one? Um. So, I am still working with my coach. I don't know that I'm ever going to stop using her for a while. So one of my biggest goals that I'm realizing at this point is just trying to start um, utilizing leverage because I've gotten to that point where I am very fortunate that 80% of my business has come from my family and my friends. I get a lot of referrals. Um, a lot of people know they, I just love on people and I, they trust me. I build the relationships quickly. 20 other per, the other 20% has been coming from my open house relationships and meeting. So, um, oh my gosh, I just went off my little tangent. Um, please repeat the question. I'm it's so okay. sorry. Yeah, no problem. What are your goals for the next year? Yeah, the goal. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> I do, so the, there was a point to that. So my point being was, is that as I now have gotten to this point in my business, I'm hitting a ceiling where I can only do so much on my own and my habits aren't fantastic right now. So I feeling like I'm productive, but I kind of need leverage. So this whole next year is going to be about building leverage. Um, you know, I'm getting while I social media, I'm a freelancer for other companies. I do a bad job marketing myself. So I need to start stepping that up and then getting an assistant and getting a little bit more um, focused on just creating that true business sense to keep things moving like clockwork. Yeah. I know. When you first started, did you time block or is that something that you're kind of like learning along the ways? Friend, I'm going to be yes. honest with you. I don't think I will ever get time blocking under okay. control because my <laughs> problem is people come before I do and that's a bad habit. So I, my coach gets on me every Monday. <laughs> so I have a calendar and I look like I time block, but realistically, it's just making me remember that I've got these things to do and I'll just get it yeah. done. <laughs> so I wish I was better, but, um, but time blocking is super important. So I would recommend it to everyone. That's awesome. What, <laughs> what, what, um, if you had to start over today with all the knowledge you have now, what would you do differently? 
Um, you know, I, it's a good question, but I also am one of those people like we all learn from the little mistakes that we've made. So I don't think it's ever going to be that one perfect move for every single person. Um, if I could have done it differently, maybe I would have went straight to an office that was going to provide me the education and the the um, the backing I needed. Um, but again, I wouldn't have known that without really right. understanding what I needed. Um, so I think that truly would have been the only real difference. And I tell a lot of people, I get a lot of people calling me saying, you know, how did you get in the business? And I'm thinking about getting a real estate and what do you suggest and who should I go talk to? And I, while I would love to recruit to Keller Williams, I don't. And what I say to them is like, you need to find what works for you, mm -hmm. but you also have to understand that when you're going to a company, they're not interviewing you, you're interviewing them just as much. So you have to find that company that's going to help you fill, fulfill your dreams or fulfill your goals. And um, I don't have experience with any other company, so I can't speak on them. But I do know what I know here. You know, it's been great. So I think that's the only thing I would have done was maybe just come straight. But I also didn't understand um, how brokerages worked. I didn't know how to look for the right person yeah. to pair with. So maybe just talking to more people because I only had one person to really go to. Yeah. yeah. And she'd been in the business for so long that it was almost like they yeah. forget what it's like to be a new agent and what you need. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. That's I know awesome. you mentioned earlier when we were talking that when you were being recruited, you were handed a book. You were yeah. recommended a book. What book was that? Do you have it with you by <laughs> chance? <laughs> yep, I do. It was called The One Thing. Okay. It's by Gary Keller, um, obviously, who owns Keller Williams. Um, or runs our Keller Williams. But what's interesting about that book is it's all about time blocking. Okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> and finding that one thing that you can do today to make all things easier and, you know, productive and whatever. So I laugh because I read a lot of books, but I never finish them. That's yeah. how I am. Another bad habit. Yeah. <laughs> I start them and then I get sidetracked. And then I, months later, I'm like, oh, yeah, there's that book. Only have yeah, with it. I'll get, I've got a bunch of highlighted things and I'll have, I have probably like 12, I'll be missing 12 pens and they're all stuck in books because they're <laughs> my bookmarkers. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. How can people get a hold of you? Um, well, they can either text, call, or email me. So my, they can call me or text at 248-412-3952 or they can email me at Heather Sean and it's S-H-A-U-N at KW.com. Hey, Awesome. Is there anything else you want to share with everyone before we go? No, I appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to come talk with you. It feels like an honor. And oh, yeah. I, it was a nice surprise. So I appreciated that. Yeah, awesome. Hey, thanks for coming on and sharing your story with us today. Thank you so much, you guys. Have a great day. Are these working? All right. Is there... There we go. Oh, there we go. I think they're working. Should we tell them? Uh... Mine keeps falling. It doesn't what like my voice. What do we got to tell them? Subscribe. Subscribe. What do we do? We got a point on it. Hey, I think there's a subscription button. Like, it might be. It might be there. It might be right there too. Somewhere. Somewhere. Find it. It's red. Yeah. And red. it's blue. It's green. I don't really know. It's, it's a color. This mic isn't even attached. Did you plug these in? Well, I guess. Uh, I wonder if they can hear us. Yeah. I wonder if they hear us. Well, we should probably tell them if, if they can hear us. We should probably tell them also give us a five star review for listening to on Apple. That'd be cool. Five, Five star stars, review. guys. Share it with everybody they can think of. We won't but, take four stars. I mean, I don't even think these are on. I mean, this no, is, I don't think this is working. This is not working. <laughs>